This message emphasizes the importance of understanding the nature of God as a Trinity Father, Son, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit. The speaker argues that God is not a solitary being, but a community of love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. May the birth of Christ the King, the Lord of Lords, the one and only, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the way, the truth and the life, be a blessing, be the reason for endless souls to come back to Him, embrace Him as Lord, as God, as the Savior and the Redeemer of the world. So, on behalf of Father Daniel, the deacons, the nuns, the monks, and all the priests, I would like to sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, wish you a very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Come on, guys. That's the way. We need to be a little bit more enthusiastic. So, Merry Christmas. Wonderful. We thank the Lord Jesus for Him accepting the will of His Father. We thank the Lord Jesus for Him being so faithful and loyal to His Heavenly Father. We thank the Lord Jesus for His infinite mercy toward mankind. We thank the Lord Jesus for accepting to coming into this world and becoming a man in a human form like every other human being. The only difference between Jesus Christ of Nazareth and any other human being is one thing. He is perfect man, i.e. sinless. He never ever committed a mistake, a sin, neither with his thought nor with his action perfect as God. We thank the Heavenly Father for His infinite love. We thank the Heavenly Father for His infinite love. As John 3.16 says and states, so God loved the whole world that He gave His only begotten Son so that whoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God the Father loved the whole world as it was, and as it was in its brokenness, in its sinfulness, um, in its misery, He gave His only begotten Son as the sacrificial Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, for your love, for your divine, infinite, holy, pure, sincere love that came from the depth of your heart. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending us your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, O Son of God, O Savior and the Redeemer of the world, for putting a smile on your Heavenly Father's face by accepting His will, coming to save us and redeem us. Today, you were born in a little manger somewhere in the Middle East um, called Bethlehem. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, who is God Himself. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for dwelling in us through the holy baptism one of the seven sacraments and working through us to shape us, mold us, and form us and eventually bring us into Christ likeness. We thank you, Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God in essence and in nature. Jesus is born. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. The Gospel of today, according to St. Luke, there was 
a decree that came forth from Augustus Caesar who was ruling over one third of the entire globe and Israel and that region of the Middle East was also under his authority, under his jurisdiction. He sent a decree saying every man and woman must go back to their own towns and their own cities where they came from, from their family lineage and to be enrolled in the census because Augustus Caesar wanted to know how many people are under his rulership. So the word comes all the way to Galilee, north of Israel, and goes all the way to a little town, a little village at the time called Nazareth, where the Holy Mother, our father Joseph the Just, lived. And when that decree came, the Holy Mother was already pregnant. And they said, you have to go back, according to Augustus Caesar, to your own towns, both our Holy Mother Mary and our Father Joseph the Just were from the lineage of King David. King David comes from Bethlehem, so they needed to travel all the way from north to south, a trip that would have taken at least two to three weeks on foot. And as they reached Bethlehem, it was time for our Holy Mother to give birth. There was no room, no place anywhere for the Word incarnate, for Jesus Christ to be born. No hotel, no house, no place. Every door they knocked they were too busy for them. Every house they went to, there was some sort of an excuse saying, we don't have the time for you. He ended up being born in a little manger, a place where animals live. When we read the gospel of today, so many beautiful messages for every one of us. But I'll dwell on one. This angel appears to the shepherds who are minding the flock. And he said, rejoice for today a savior is has come to this realm, to this world. And then they saw heavenly hosts with that angel all shouting and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and good hope to all men. Now I'm speaking in the language of the Lord Jesus the Aramaic or the Syriac, but with the Eastern, with the Eastern dialect. Tishbukhta la laha bamrawme. Tishbukhta glory la laha to God bamrawme in the highest. Wal ar'a shlama. Al ar'a and on earth shlama, peace. That's where the Hebrew also uses the word shalom or Shalim. That's where the word Ur Shalim comes from. Ur in Aramaic, Syriac in Hebrew has two meanings. Ur can mean a city, a small city, and it can mean also a road or a path or a way. Ur Shalim, the city of Shalim, peace, or the uh, shalim can also mean the end. Ur can mean the road. It is the end of the road. It is where everything began and where everything will come to an end. 
It all began from Ur Shalim, the beginning of the city of peace, and it will all end in Ur Shalim, the end of the road. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. And good hope to all men or to all mankind. Good hope. Sawra, good. Tawa means good. Sawra means hope. Good hope to all men. My beloveds, one of the main reasons or if I could say the main reason why God created us, the human race. Why? Because God had his glory from the very beginning. And you see that in the gospel of according to St. John where the Lord Jesus himself, he says to his dad, dad, I have glorified you glorify me and give me back the very glory which I had when I was with you from the very beginning where there was no beginning before the creations of the world when I was with you as the son of God I was with you in that glory glorify me that I glorified you on earth and I want that glory to be given to me back because on Good Friday, my glory was taken away from me. But I want that glory back because, Dad, all I have done on earth was to glorify your holy name. And I said it to everyone who came to me. I said, it is not he who says, Lord, Lord, but it is he who does the will of my Father. My food is to do the will of my Father. Dad, everything I said, everything I did was to glorify you. And prior to becoming a human, I always glorified you as the Son, the only begotten Son of God. So that glory God had from the very beginning before anything and everything that was created. However, God wanted, based on love, through freedom and through his choice, he wanted to be glorified for the first time ever externally, not internally. He was glorified by his son, the begotten son of God, internally. So the glory he had for himself within himself from the very beginning that had no beginning. But for the first time, God chose willingly for him to be glorified externally by another creation of his own hands to be called his son. He ended up choosing to create Adam. Adam was the first son to God and the first son ever to God that is external to him, not internal as the begotten son is. So when Adam was created and placed in the Garden of Eden, when he worshiped God, when he praised God, when he thanked God for the food or anything he had done, for the first time ever, God was glorified by an external son. For the first time ever. When the angels appeared to the shepherds over 2,000 years ago, what did they say? The first thing they said, glory to God in the highest. The first word uttered from the angelic orders to mankind was the word glory. Why? 
See, when Adam was in the garden, i.e. in the presence of God, i.e. sinless, God was glorified through his son, Adam. The day that came where Adam, when Adam broke God's word, that glory was snatched away from God, was taken away from God. Because ever since Adam broke God's word, he fell from that position of being the son of God. Because to be a son of God, you have to be sinless. You have to be holy. You have to be pure to, to be the son of God. When Adam broke God's word, he was no longer the son of God. He became a slave to his own inequities, transgressions, and a slave to Satan eventually. He no longer was able to claim the sonship. He fell from that position. From a son became a slave. Therefore, that glory which God created Adam for was taken away from God. Adam now is a slave. As a slave cannot glorify God. Why? A slave cannot glorify his master. Because whatever the slave does and whatever the slave says to the master, that is the least that he needs to do. Otherwise, his head will be chopped. A slave can't boast about him glorifying the master. The master says, whether you like it or not, you will say nice things about me. The moment you say anything nasty about me, I'll just chop your head. When is this master glorified truly? When his own son says to him, I love you, dad. It is only the father is glorified when his son respects him. That's the only time a human being is glorified. When it's a father-son relationship bonded together in perfection. Adam fell from that sonship. As a slave can't glorify his master. The mouth was shut. Till when? Till this sweetheart was born. <laughs> God the Father was left with no glory from, an, from the external source being the human being. He was left with no glory till Jesus Christ of Nazareth was born. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the angels proclaimed, professed, confessed. The first word that was uttered from their mouth was glory to God. Why? Because they are saying to the human race, to Adam and his descendants, today is the day when that glory is being brought back and given back to God. Hallelujah to this glorious, holy, and historical day for the first time ever since the fall of mankind in the garden of eden through adam for the first time ever mankind is glorifying god once again through jesus christ of nazareth when jesus was born this is the latter adam this is another human being like adam but this man is perfect. He is not like Adam, imperfect, that he revealed his imperfection in the Garden of Eden. This man is so perfect, he will do the will of his heavenly dad throughout his life on this earth, loyally 
faithfully till the end, the end of the cross, where he will be nailed, he will die on the cross, he will be put to the tomb, into the tomb, but he will rise on the third day. Throughout his journey on earth, for 33 years and four months, he will glorify God the Father without fail. Glory was brought and given back to God when Jesus Christ, the latter Adam, was born. Because this Adam fails God not. God the Father was happy. I have now a human being that will truly glorify me. Now what is glory? Glory is only made possible when I totally deny myself in order for you to be fully revealed. This is glory. When I totally deny myself for the one I love is to be totally revealed, venerated, worshipped, honored, respected. So when Jesus Christ came as a human being, he totally effaced himself. He totally diminished himself. He totally denied himself because all his concern was for his heavenly father to be totally revealed in him in order for the entire human race to love his dad through him but for him not to be loved but his dad to be loved through him that was the role of jesus christ the perfect man on earth to make people love his dad through him that was his only concern and role to fulfill what about you Jesus don't you want people to love you he said no why because he said my rejoicing my happiness my fulfillment is when people love my dad and I be the reason for that I'm content this is my glory when my dad is glorified through me he's smiling he's saying not bad you piece of dust I taught you well I'm serious he's smiling right now he's happy so Oh yes, Jesus can make you laugh too. He's got a great sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, he's amazing. This is the glory that was given back to God. Jesus never lived for himself, not even one split second. Everything was for his dad, nothing for him. Is that hard? Of course not. It's impossible. It's not hard to totally deny yourself. Humanly, it's impossible. It takes God for you and I to be able to totally deny ourselves. It takes God. That's why Christianity is not hard. Christianity is impossible. Some of our beloved people, the non-Christians, they misunderstand the concept of, of the Trinity. They misunderstand the concept of the Holy Trinity. Like our beloved Jews, 
and the Muslim world. The reason I'm mentioning this, I want to get to something very foundational. They refer to themselves as the monotheists. Monotheists mean they believe in God in their own way, but this God is just one and one only. Mono, uno, one. Now, if God is just one and one only, there is a problem. They both believe that God speaks. God orders things into being, into existence. So God speaks. And we see that very vividly clear in the very beginning of the Old Testament, Genesis chapter 1. The very beginning of the Old Testament, which by the way, the Old Testament, the Torah, is shared, it is written in Hebrew, so our beloved Jewish people believe in the Torah, so as the Christians. Our beloved Muslims took some parts and they've changed a few parts, which they had no right to do that since it's not their book. But regardless, so in the beginning we see God speaks. If God is just one and one only, when he spoke, who was he speaking with? Who was he speaking to? If he's just one, the one can't talk to itself. The reason as humans, we are able to talk to our own self is because we are not just one. We are one in three and three in one. I exist. I have a brain, I have a life, I can breathe, I have a life, I have a brain, and I exist. Is my existence my brain? No. Is my brain my life? No. Is my life my existence or my brain? No. Am I three people? No, I'm one. But I'm one in three and three in one. I have a body a soul and a spirit. I'm actually a soul. I have a body and a spirit. I'm three, but I'm one human being. You know why, my beloved? Love, that's what I'm trying to get to. Love can only exist when there is two and more. Love cannot exist when there is only one and one only. When there is two and more, love is made possible. I love myself because I'm not one. I am three in one and one in three. And when I meet another person, two and more, we begin to know each other. We begin to love one another. So love is only made possible, can only come into existence and into play when there is two and more. So God the Father loves the Son and the bond between the Father and the Son is the Holy Spirit. The relationship, the bond of this relationship is the Holy Spirit. The Father loves the Son, the Son loves the Father. There is more than one in the nature of God, but all are one God, like the human is one human being. If I ask any one who believes in God, does God exist according to your faith? They will say, of course he exists. Well, my dear, the existence of God is the Father. Is God intelligent? Does he have a brain? Of course he does. 
the brain of God is the sun. Is God alive? Is he the source of life? They'll say, of course, he is the source of life. Well, the source of life is the Holy Spirit. So the existence is not the brain. The brain is not the life, but that doesn't make God three. It's only one. It's only one. And the word father in the Syriac Aramaic language is Abba or Abon. Abba means the root to all roots, the foundation to all foundations. The existence. So father in the Aramaic language means the existence. The son here is the word, the logos, the brain. There has never been a time where God existed that he was without a brain. The brain was with him from the very beginning because the brain is God himself. And God never existed without a brain nor without a life. He was always the living God from the very beginning. And that life of God is the Holy Spirit. God exists, God has a brain, God is the living God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit but he is one God. And the only reason why God is love, because love is only made possible when there is two or more for love to come into existence. If, it's, if God is only just one unit and nothing else, who was he talking to? Who did he love? One can't love itself. I hope you're with me. Why was Jesus born? Love. That's what I want to get to. Why did Jesus come? Love. Who sent him? Love. For what reason he came? Love. Why did he become a human? Love. Why did he suffer? Love. Why was he crucified? Love. Why was he buried? Love. Why did he rise? Love. Why did he go up to heaven and sit at the right hand of the Father? Love. Love. You go and ask any human being, I'm not talking now about Christians, anyone, atheists, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists, any and every human being, with all love and respect. Can you live without love? They'll say no. But you see, everyone interprets this love their own way. To some, I have to be a slave to God. This is love, when I am a slave to God. To some, when I steal a Ferrari, now that's what you call love, brother. Because with my Centrelink payment, I can never even dream of having a Ferrari, but I love having a Ferrari. This is my love, and this is what defines love to me, and for me, is when I have a Ferrari. So when I stole the Ferrari, stealing it for me is the ultimate love. When I have fun, I do as I please. I go where I want, dress up the way I wish, put tattoos and 124 earrings around my ear, nose and eyebrows. This is love, brother. Some to them, the wind is their God. The moon is their God. The cow is their God. The plant is their God. The fire is their God. But let me ask you one thing. Do you want to find the creator of heavens and earth and everything that is visible and invisible? If you say yes, then the only way, 
the only way, the only way for you to find him is for you to get to know him. And the only way for you to get to know him is when he finds you, not you find him. Because he is so distant. He is infinite. I am a finite piece of dust. He is spirit. I am physical. Two different natures. I can never fathom him. I can never see him. I can never reach him. I can never get to him. I can never understand, comprehend him. He needs to come and find me and reveal himself to me. Because love is only made possible also when you get to know somebody. You cannot say nor claim that you love someone you don't know. You've heard this from me before. I'll say it again. You cannot claim to say that I love someone I don't know. The only way you can say I love someone when you know that someone. So what leads to this love is knowledge. But the problem is, love here is between God and me. God is divine spirit, infinite. I am a dust, piece of dust, finite, temporal, tangible. Two different realms, two different natures. I cannot relate to someone that does not share my nature. In order for me to love God, I need to know him because without knowing the person, I can never say I love someone who is a total stranger to me. So when will I love God? When God builds a relationship with me, not through a prophet. Because a prophet, no matter how great of that prophet is, a prophet, the best they can do is bring to humanity maybe, maybe a little tiny drop of the divine ocean. That little drop from that divine ocean does not tell me anything about God. All it says, God in this drop of a message said to me, do this, don't do this. It said, God said, do this, don't do this, but it doesn't tell me who God is, what God is, how he thinks, what kind of a heartbeat does he have. I need to know him. I need to know him. So God decided to come. Since I can't go to him, the only way then he must come to me. Who came? The Son. Who is the Son? In the Gospel according to St. John 1.1 1, 1, is the Word. In the Greek text is the Logos. What is the Logos? The intellect, the brain. The Word came. This word, in its nature, it is invisible, cannot be seen, can only be heard. When will this word be tangible, visible to the naked eye, to the human flesh, naked eye? When will this word be tangible? When you take a pen and put that pen to the paper and start writing this word. That word that is now written on that paper, the word which was invisible, now it is visible to the naked eye. God the Father took his word, which is the Son, and wrote it on the letter of this body. This body became the letter, where the word was written by the hand 
of the Almighty God the Father. He wrote his word on this body, which is the letter, and he mailed that letter from heaven to earth. This letter was delivered and was opened in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago. When the word was written on the flesh, being that paper, the word became tangible, visible to the naked eye. When I read the letter from God the Father, this letter is not a prophet. This letter is the word which is God himself. I'm speaking to you. I don't know why I'm talking this way. I'm speaking to you. The word left me and reached you. But when the word left me, did it really leave me fully? No. It left me and reached you, but at the same time, the word stayed with me. Never left me. That's what the, where the word comes, proceeds forth. And then I see in Creed, the son who proceeds from the father. Sorry, the, I beg your pardon. The spirit, the Holy Spirit that proceeds from the father. The Holy Spirit does not proceed from the son. He proceeds from the Father and Father only. Why? Because the word proceed is not the word exit. To exit a place meaning you fully leave that place, totally leave it, depart from it for good. So if the Holy Spirit exits the Father, that means now there is more than one God. But the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father, meaning he came out of the Father, but he remains in the Father. So the word, when you write a letter to someone in America in the good olden days, or now we say with an email, you write an email to someone in America, that email has words in it. Those words, they were a thought in your head. Those thoughts were translated into words. You wrote it, you typed it in an email format, and you clicked send. That email went all the way from Australia to America. But that email contains the word which you wrote in it. Those words came from your head, from your brain. Did the words leave you? No, they stayed. But what, what happened? The words traveled all the way to the other side of the Pacific Ocean. But the words that went in that email are still with you. This is the Logos. He was sent forth by the Father, was written on this flesh for the word to be tangible, visible. The flesh became the letter which God the Father made it, his letter of love to the human race. When that letter was sent from God the Father from heaven to earth, the letter went with his word written on it, but the word is always with the Father, never left him. Jesus Christ in his divinity is all God. He came to say, I am the letter sent by my dad to humanity. Whoever reads me and whoever accepts this letter accepts my dad. He who receives me receives my father. Didn't he say that to his, to his disciples? He who receives you receives me and he who receives me receives the father. And when you receive the father, what are you receiving? Love. Love. Can you live with that love? No. Why do people get married? Because they love each other. Why do we become bishops? Because we love the Lord. I 
I could have been downtown brother. It's uh, Sunday Nativity, the birth of the Messiah. I could have been celebrating this day with some people, but I chose to come to the church just like you did. Why? Because we love the Lord. Why would you go and visit someone you don't love? Doesn't make sense. You only want to see the one you love isn't it you can't wait to be with the one you love but if you if someone you don't love you'll be suffocating the second becomes like a year you can't wait for it to be over to run away from that place because there is no oxygen you see love gives you that breath of life what makes life possible is love that's why God is love. You see, without God, there is no love. And without love, there is no life. So if there is no life, what else is left? Death. So what is death? The absence of life. What is darkness? The absence of light. You see, God created the light. Even the scientist, you go and ask them, even the atheist scientist, can you measure darkness? They'll say, no. Why can't you measure darkness? Because they'll say to you, through science, we came to know darkness is not a creation. In fact, darkness doesn't exist. So what is in existence? They will tell you the light. Why? Because the light was created. They'll stop at the Big Bang, if they're atheists. They'll stop at the Big Bang. They'll say the Big Bang brought the light. Oh, so the light is created, correct? They'll say yes. That's why as scientists, we measure light, but we cannot measure darkness because darkness is not a creation. God never created darkness. God created the light. God saw it was dark and he said, let there be light. He created the light. So where did darkness come from? If it's not an, an existence, if it's not a creative thing, because every time light is absent, we allow something that was never created to be in existence. Every time we deny God's existence in our life as human beings. We allow something to exist in us that was never created by God. You know what that thing is? Slave. God never created a slave. God only created a son. S-O-N. When we walk away from our heavenly father, I allow something that comes into my life that was never created like darkness. I become a slave. As a slave, I am darkness. As darkness, I don't exist. What is someone when they don't exist? What do you call them? Dead. The world is living in death because the world denied the very creator of it. Why is the world dead? Because there is no love in the world. There is no love. That's why it's dead. Because what brings life into existence is love. Is love. I wanted this to be sounded loudly. This is the love of my life. I kiss the Holy Cross, which so sadly, so many people are ignorant of the cross 
and are also offensive toward the cross. Because they don't understand the concept of love. Love. All capital letters, L-O-V-E. My dear friend, do you want to know why God became a man? Because of love. You see, when you truly love, you'll begin then and then only to do things you would never ever have done, not even in your dreams. You'll start acting so weird as if you, there is few fuses gone off in your head. You'll start saying things you never said before. You'll start doing things you've never done before and you shock yourself. How come I'm doing things like this way? I can't believe this is me. Well, you better because love make you do crazy things. Because love is not from this realm. You see, this realm, everything it does is natural. But love comes from the spiritual realm, comes from entirely a different realm. So everything from that different realm is unnatural to the natural realm. You see, it is perfect, but since I live in the natural realm, everything that comes from above this natural realm to me is abnormal. To me it is abnormal, but to that realm is absolutely perfect. So to us, God is abnormal. This is because of me, not Him. Because I live in the natural and I'm trying to fathom the unnatural. That's why everything from God is weird. That's why people say, Astaghfirullah. God forbids, how can God come and be a man and not only be a man, to be nailed on a cross? Astaghfirullah. God forbids, far from him. Habibi, Habibi, my darling, my centerling. I tell you this, when you come to understand the concept of love, then and then only you will embrace this loving God and the awesomeness of His love. I'll cut it short. I know I spoke a lot. Listen. Since God is love, please, He is not the love giver. He is love itself. But he is a life giver. That's the Bible. The Holy Bible says God is love, but he is a life giver. Because the foundation to life is love. And everything comes from God. Therefore, God is love, not a love giver. Love is the foundation to everything beautiful. Since God is love, and since this love comes from outside the natural realm where we live, that's why it's weird. My brain can't, can't take it. The first thing God, when he came to create the man, the human being, everything that God created outside of the man, he created with his word. He said, let there be light, and light was. Let there be birds, birds, water, plants, stars, galaxies, everything was created with his word. But when he came to create the human being, he did not create the human being with his word. He created the human being with his hands. What does he say? Let us go down and make. He didn't say, and let there be men. No, he said, let us go down. Oh, but how come you didn't go down when you created the stars? How come you didn't go down when you created the angels? 
how come you didn't go down when you created the waters and the rivers and the, and the trees and everything that creeps and crawls on earth and in the sea and everywhere how come you didn't go down he said because the only one who represents me as the son s-o-n is the human being that's why my son i create with my own hands not with my word let us go down and make man and what did god do where did he stretch his hands to make this man he stretched his hands in the mud clay adam in aramaic syriac means red mud idamta dam is blood red idamta means red mud he put his hands in the mud god god doesn't have physical hands okay so but he made the man with his own hands he molded him internally he gave birth to him inwardly from inside of him he breathed into his nostrils and he gave him the breath of life adam became a living soul he put his hands in the clay red mud my question to every human being who plays in the mud little kids mom and dad they they wash them clean them change them clothe them and they go and play in the mud you don't blame them because the children that's all they know they don't know any better their intellect is still growing it's still maturing well i can't blame kids to play in the mud but excuse me doesn't god know what he's doing god is the source of wisdom he's the perfect being doesn't he know what he's doing how come he's playing in the mud ask him he'll tell you love makes you do crazy things because i love you so much because i love you more than myself i forgot for a moment if i could say it linguistically god never forgets but i'm speaking in a human language here he said because i love you more than me i forgot who i am and what i am i was seen as a little kid playing in the mud i went down to the lowest level to take you to the highest level this is true love in the making where it makes the one who loves the most act as if they are crazy this is love so what is the cross crazy love what is the cross crazy love jesus said i was born today for the cross it sounds crazy are you born to live to be crucified in order to die did, were you born to die yes i was born to die yes why because i am love i am the letter of love from my dad to the human race i want to say to everyone my dad loves you so much i came to reveal this love in its perfection the first thing i'll do for you is i'll die for you so the cross is not the end of the road it's the beginning of the road he says true love begins with death ends with life because i love you so much i came to die for you my darling i came to die for you he called the church his bride it's a marital it's a marital matrimony he came to die for his church to say my love for you is so awesome when you broke my word you broke my heart you nailed me you broke me when you love someone the most and they hurt you don't they shatter you to pieces 
Oh, I've seen so many relationships. The guy is muscly. He is scary looking. He is so powerful. He lifts 150 kilos with one finger. A little tiny woman, so fragile, so weak, she broke Hercules to pieces because she left him. He was gone with the wind. Ah, oh, you're so powerful, what happened? He said, I love this person so much. The love is so weak. She walked away. I was broken forever. When we walked away from God, we broke him. This is what love does to the person. Love hurts a lot. But the problem, without love, there is no life. The source to life is pain. No one can live without love. You go to a serial killer. You go to a drug addict. You go to a homeless person. You go to all those people who did and did and did and did and did. You trace it back to their childhood. There was not enough dosage of love given to them. Whether consciously or subconsciously, I can guarantee you there was a lack of love in that child's life while they were in their mother's womb. I don't have the time. I don't have the time. Ugh. Love is, is the source of power. No one was born to be a killer. No one was born to be a drug addict. No one was born to be a serial killer. No one. The lack of love led them to that. And that's why when a person goes through suffering, either one of two things will happen. Either this person will come out of that suffering and says to himself or herself, I suffered, I will do my absolute best through the grace of God to make sure no one else suffers the way I suffered. Others will come out and say, I suffered, I will do my absolute best to make sure no one rests. Why did I suffer? I'll make everyone else suffers like I did. It's either this way or that way. The only way to guaranteeing, maintaining that true love, you need to come back to Jesus Christ. Let him heal you and give you a new life. Today, the birth of the Messiah is the beginning to the embracement of love, divine love. Say, Lord, you had no house that had its door open for you to be born in, no place. Today, Lord, I make my heart the manger for you to be born in. I open the door of my heart. Let love come into this heart because it is where the heart, where love lies in. Today, open the door of your heart and say, oh, the love of heaven, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the love letter from the heavenly Father, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, enter this little tiny heart of your little servant, be born into this heart. I make my heart today a manger for you and for the Holy Family, my mama, sweetheart Mary, and my father Joseph. Come in into this little manger, my heart, and let Jesus be born into it. 
Open the door of your heart because the heart speaks the language of love. The heart speaks the language of love. If there is someone in your life you haven't spoken to for a long time, leave the church, pick up the phone and say, Merry Christmas, I love you, regardless what has happened. I forgive you, I ask you to forgive me. Call them. If they hang up in your face, so be it. You've done your part, you've made your Heavenly Father happy. That's what matters. If you haven't forgiven, let go. Let love sweep you, engulf you, and overtake you, and control you. Let go. Forgive. Nothing is worth it, except this sweetheart. The love of my life. Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Elvis Presley. I'm sure there are people now begging God to give him one more chance to come back to earth to undo things and give another chance to fix it. We still have the chance to fix it. Don't let this chance pass you by. Hold on to it. Say, Lord, today make me your son. Make me your daughter. I want to be God's child where I run to my father and throw myself in, in his bosoms and I ask him to embrace me and put me in his heart. He's waiting to embrace everyone. Jesus Christ has got nothing to do with Christians. Jesus Christ has got to do with love. He who loves me does what I say. Love one another and this the world will know that you are my disciples. He didn't say to Simon Peter, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, go and preach with eloquent speeches. Receive your PhD in theology before you go out to Fairfield Nita City and proclaim the gospel. He didn't. He didn't say to anyone, get your PhD before you are qualified. He said, the only time you will qualify to speak on my behalf is the day when you begin to learn how to love me. I am love. Love cannot be learned. Love can only be lived. To be understood. When you live it, then love will reveal itself to you. I want you to love me. Then it is my portion. It is my way to qualify you. Your PhD does not qualify you to be my servant and my son. <laughs> it is my son who qualifies you. Says the father. The heavenly father. My son qualifies you. If you don't love my son, you're not qualified. That's why there are so many leaders are a miserable failure. They studied, but they never loved Jesus. They are a miserable failure. They destroyed the church, in fact. But they are very learned people, very well informed into the scripture, very educated, but destroyed the church. Why? Because they have no love for the son. And he who does not love the son has no life in him and the wrath of God is bestowed upon them. That's why there are church leaders that are destroying the church and decimating the flock. But they are very educated people. But they lack love. 
Because love, my beloved, you don't receive from Oxford University. Love is received from one source, the Heavenly Father. You can't buy him. You can't deceive him. You can't be a hypocrite before him. The only way God the Father will give you his love when you embrace his son, the love letter sent by the Father to the human race. And to embrace the son, you need to, you need to die to yourself. Don't be a show off. That's the only time you're gonna be able to embrace the son. The, same, the son cannot be embraced and received until I die to my old person. Stop saying my way, my way, my way. Start saying God's way. Then the son is yours. When the son is yours, you're filled by the Holy Spirit. Then you're wise. Then you'll understand Corona is a lie. <laughs> Because it takes God to open your eyes and see everyone, including Satan. Yeah, you'll see him very clearly. Very clearly. I'm not a genius. He is Jesus, <laughs> the love of my life. Anyway, it's Christmas. Can you put your hands together, to Father Daniel? Come, come, come. Um, there is no words that can express my sincere um, gratitude to the Lord Jesus for sending me such a wonderful son called Father Daniel. And this goes the same to all the fathers, Father Sargon, Father Isaac, and Father George. But since he is in the flesh present here, the other ones have legged it. <laughs> Oh, Kazi, they've legged it, brother. Yeah, so um, um, Father Daniel is here. How are you going, brother? I'm well, young guys. How are you? You sure? I'm very sure. <laughs> Father Daniel is one of a kind. Um, I thank the Lord Jesus for him. Um, and I pray, and I ask you to all pray, to uh, give him good health, good spirit, a long life, to serve his Lord and his God, Jesus Christ, and to serve the flock of the Good Shepherd, which is you, my beloved. Um, so, I love you, brother. Love you too, yes. One more. Three. Yalla. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Aziz Arabi, God bless you. I like this one better. No, no, I like this one better. That's the way. High five, bro. God bless you all. Merry Christmas. And, I, um, and if I don't see you for the new year, I wish you a very, very happy and blessed 2023. We pray whatever has happened in the past, and whatever this year has had in it, we ask the Lord Jesus to make 23 a much better year, a more prosperous, spiritually more than physically. We pray 23 to be a year where so many hearts are given to the Lord Jesus, coming to the light and embracing the light of the world, embracing the love sent from heaven to this world. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray, and for all those who are Christians, we pray for the Lord Jesus to guide them, protect them, increase their faith and their love for God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God in nature and one God in essence. Amen. We pray for the unity of the church. We pray for the tranquility of this turmoil world. God, touch the hearts of every man and woman, every human being, Christians and non-Christians, to realize where the truth is and where the true love is, to come and embrace this true love, live it, share it, and embrace it with everyone else. Jesus Christ, 
is the only way to God. There is no other way. Now this is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. This has got nothing to do with Christianity. This has got to do with the true divine God who was revealed in the flesh over 2,000 years. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to his holy name. Amen. Now let us bow down our heads, asking the Lord Jesus for forgiveness while we are reciting this prayer of absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our good God and full of mercy, our good God and full of mercy, whose grace and mercy is poured upon all. Pour, my Lord, the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants, and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance. Renew in them your Holy Spirit, by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation. Purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes, and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace, and instill the works of their behavior in the paths of righteousness. Please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith in the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries. Empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will. To confess, worship, and praise your holy name, the Lord of all, Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Merry Christmas, everybody. And, and to those who are watching us through live streaming, Merry Christmas wherever you are and whoever you are. May the birth of the Messiah fill your life with joy, fill your life with good health and prosperity. May your wishes come into wishing and may Christ be glorified in your lives, my beloveds, wherever you are. We pray for the Middle East. We pray for our beloved country, Australia. We pray for America. We pray for Canada. We pray for the European nations. We pray for Africa. We pray for Asia. We pray for every country and every human being on the face of this planet that God to be revealed to them in the truth and see this truth, realize it, and run and embrace this truth. This truth, I found it when a long time ago, his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. God bless. Merry Christmas. The parallels drawn between the fall of man in the Garden of Eden and the redemption through Christ taught the importance of humility and selflessness in following God's will taught the need to go beyond simply following rules and laws to have a personal relationship with God.